Good afternoon, guys. It's working, bringing you a quick update on Bitcoin. Hope you guys are having a wonderful afternoon. Uh, we're looking at Bitcoin to the one uh, Bitcoin to the U.S. dollar. This is the one-hour chart on Coinbase. And yesterday, guys, we discussed this move. Price came back down. Um, I discussed how uh, retail investors uh, reacted to this move. I told you that they were getting much wiser, um, and that was a healthier sign. Um, overall in the market here and that is still true to this day we saw price come back up I told you yesterday um, as price came up here I told you more than likely we we're going to expect a, uh, a bit of a correction coming back down for a retest that's exactly what we saw if I pull our fib here we go swing low swing high we can see price came back down a uh, perfect bounce right off the 382 fib and then ended up coming back up to test our resistance up here at 6360 um, now that 6360 price came back up um, tested that resistance. We had a rejection there, guys, and here we sit right now at about 63.38 um, at the moment. Now, I wouldn't be surprised, guys, um, if I pull, uh, actually, let me zoom in here so you guys can see a little bit better. Um, if I if I look at this and I draw an arrow from wick to wick here, um, you can see that there was a, uh, that price came up and created a slightly higher high. Now, if I look at my MACD and I go down to the same point, this is again on the hourly chart. What do I see? I can see that the MACD was creating a lower high. Um, so obviously that is a bearish divergence. Um, and of course, we're seeing that bearish divergence now with that rejection um, of price there. Um, now, that was pretty severe bearish divergence on the hourly chart. However, we're not seeing it on the RSI. Um, so uh, why do I point that out? I point that out because I wouldn't be surprised, given the severity of the MACD, um, the bearish divergence on MACD, I wouldn't be surprised to see price come back down, possibly retest this zone again. And of course, that's going to be extremely telling to see how price reacts once we do test this zone. Um, if price comes back down, test this zone, end up coming back up, we could possibly consolidate right on top of it. But what I'd like to see is coming back down, testing this zone, guys, and then just a nice explosion back up to penetrate this 6360. If we do end up breaking below this zone, so if price does penetrate about 60 6290. Uh, price does go below 6290. I think it'll be more than likely a very quick drop right back down to this zone. Whoop, that was way too high. Right back down to this zone right in here, more than likely at about 6260, uh, 6250, somewhere thereabouts for a uh, for a retest. Oh, sorry about that, guys. I don't want to. Uh, so for now, guys, we're going to be, let me pull into the four hour chart so you can see a little bit better. Uh, for now, what we're watching, guys, we're obviously watching this zone here, waiting to see if we can get this retest and then waiting to see how price reacts into this zone. This is still very, very, um, uh, retail investors are still acting um, much, much wiser than they were before. As I pointed out yesterday, guys, what happened when we had price rise over here, right? Uh, excuse me, rise in the last eight hours. We actually, if we come over here and we look at our short positions on Bitcoin, I get to the four hours so you can see a little bit better. Uh, we can see that, that uh, short positions continue to fall off the board. Um, so short continues continue to fall, or short positions, I should say, uh, continue to fall. Um, but long positions actually fell as well in the last eight hours. So with that rise in price, long positions actually dropped. Why is that significant? It tells you that, the, the, again, retail investors are getting much wiser to this. They're willing to take profit. So the guys that bought down here are taking profit up here. So when price came back up, it tested this resistance area right in here. Soon, it, more than likely, they had their sell orders sitting up at this resistance, knowing that we could get a bounce off the resistance. Price came back up, hit that resistance, triggered their sell orders, and of course, um, that's exactly what happened. They ended up selling. Price came right back down a little bit. But again, that shows you how how uh, market makers, or excuse me, how retail investors are just getting much much wiser. Typically, anytime price would rise in the past, you would get retail investors chasing price and entering into long positions, and we're no longer seeing. That um, so it's going to be very interesting to see how this ends up playing out, guys. But I do I I am um, very very optimistic that retail is getting wiser um, to these uh, to these games. Now I do think that market makers are trying some different tactics. We just had um, the CEO of Bitmex. I, I lost his name now, uh, but the CEO of Bitmex, which is basically the uh, the, the exchange that does the, the exchange that does the most volume by far, um, it is a a margin exchange. You can trade margin. You can trade on uh, uh, leverage off that exchange. Um, that the CEO came out and announced that he thinks that the bear market could extend another 18 months. Um, now that is pure trying. Just that is trying to what you know what? Why would he do that? Why would he come out and announce that? You know, in my opinion, he's trying to get. People, because shorts are falling off the board here, and I mean they are falling off big time. Because shorts are falling off the board here, I, in my opinion, I think that he wants to see shorts start to stack again. I think he wants shorts to stack, and uh, if that does happen, I think market makers would clean out the possibly price would in the short term price would drop, 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 and then as shorts start to stack higher and higher, eventually they're just going to clobber them by by market makers are going to clobber them by running a massive short squeeze. You know, Bitmex is where. So 
so much of the manipulation takes place. So I find it very, very funny that the CEO is coming out. In fact, let me, uh, I do have this article somewhere. Where do I have it? Ah, here it is. Here it is. Yeah, so the CEO of Bitfinex, here it is. C uh, CEO of largest crypto exchange believes the Bitcoin bears are here to stay. Um, here, the Arthur Hayes, that's the guy's name. Um, so he's calling for uh, the bear market, um, the stamina bears to, uh, let's see, bears have the stamina to keep control of the crypto market for at least 18 months longer. That's basically what he's saying. Then he goes in blah, 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 explaining why he does that uh, or why he's thinking that. Um, so I, I find that extremely interesting that he would come out and announce that, guys. Um, I, that is pure manipulation. Always ask why. Um, always ask why someone would say that, why someone would do that. So if we see, if you see short start to stack here in the next week or so, they start to stack, especially if you see short stack and long start to drop off the board. In my opinion, guys, that's going to mean, uh, even if you see price drop um, in the short term, in my opinion, that's going to be setting up for a massive short squeeze, a massive rise in price, if that does happen. Now, it's going to be very interesting to see what it has. Whereas of right now, that's not what's happening at all. But if that does start to happen, I want you guys to keep an eye on that. I want you guys to start thinking market psychology and how this is working and how, uh, how manipulated this market has been for so long. So this is a game. This is a zero sum game for someone to make somebody money, for someone to make money, someone has to lose money. Money. So always be uh, keep your mind on the the psychology of this. With with uh, uh, let me pull up the volume here. With volume as low as it as it is. Remember, volume is sitting right now at uh, 3.7 billion. That is, for Bitcoin, that is very very low. That is that, that is very pathetic. I mean, if you come over here and you look at the volume, uh, the historical volume, and if we get, if we look all the way back to uh, what, that's not what I wanted. If we look at the historical volume, guys, and we go all the way back to December of uh of last year you know what we see volume uh 14 billion 10 billion 16 billion 21 23 billion remember we're sitting at 3.7 billion right now 18 billion 15 billion on a day-to-day -day basis i mean this was 18 20 20 billion or excuse me 18 billion, 20 i mean on a day-to-day -day basis this is the kind of volume that was happening and today we're sitting at 3.7 billion um so Volume is. I point that out to say that it shows you the lower the volume is, the easier it is, the easier it is for market makers to manipulate the market. So they could literally drive price any way they want to right now. So keep that in mind until we start seeing volume above above 10 billion on a consecutive basis. This is going. This could be very manipulated, and you want to make sure that you're not going to get caught in any kind of a trap. So always ask yourself why the why the influential traders, why the in, influential money is doing what it's doing why it's saying what it's saying. Remember, if I zoom out here, guys, look at the overall, overall trend here. We are still trading within a very tight range. We're still continuing to create a series of lower highs and higher lows, and we have not broken out of that yet. Remember, until we break out of this range, the range, the top of which sits at 67.50, the bottom of which sits at 61.15, until one of those two um, areas are broken, we have, not create, we have not started a new trend, and we need a new trend. Um, in order to uh, to find out where price is going. For right now, guys, I can see price literally going in either direction. So even though we're getting a healthier, even though retail investors are getting much, much wiser, and that is a healthy sign in the market, even though that is a very healthy sign, that does not mean that we're going on a bull run just yet. So we're, we, until we break one of those two price points, until we start creating lower lows or higher highs, we, until we establish a new trend, all we can do is trade that range. And if you're not comfortable trading the range, then just hands off, wait for now, wait for that new trend to establish. If you don't catch the bottom, guys, as I always tell you, that is fine. You don't have to catch the bottom at all. All right, so let's come up. All you have to do is find out a new trend and make sure you have money on the side for when you do have that trend. And we can start forecasting uh, the uh, uh, forecasting price in a much more reliable way. All right, this is looking at the four-hour chart on Coinbase. We're looking at our moving averages and Bollinger Bands. We can see that price is coming up, hitting the upper Bollinger Band as of right now. Of course, we had that rejection. Let's wait and see. We also have a rejection off the 50-day moving average and the 55-day EMA. I'd like to see price break above on the four-hour, above the, at least the 55-day EMA, but definitely above the 50-day moving average. If we can get above that 50-day moving average on the four-hour, that's going to be an extremely bullish sign in my opinion. Looking at the daily, I told you yesterday that I wanted to see price break above the eight-day EMA on the daily chart. Chart. We did break above it briefly here. We got pushed right back down. It's finding resistance on that eight-day EMA now. I want to see the daily candle close above this eight-day EMA. Um, in my opinion, that'd be that would be that would signal that at least the bulls still are fighting. Um, if we get rejected far below this eight-day EMA, guys, it's going to be a very bearish sign. Now, what I really want to see on the daily chart, guys, and when I tell you guys all the time, um, a break above 
the 21 day EM, uh, 21 day EMA on the uh, on the daily chart uh, usually signals a, a momentum shift in this in this instance it would be a momentum shift in favor of the bulls of course if we were above and broke below the 21 day EMA that would be a momentum shift in favor of the bears so right now we're below if we can break above decisively by decisively if we can get a daily candle that opens and closes above this 21 day EMA um, then that's going to be an extremely bullish sign, and in my opinion, would signal or would be a good sign of a possible momentum shift in favor of the bulls. So let's wait and see if we can get that, but keep your eyes on that, guys. That's what we're going to be watching for now. <clears throat> Excuse me. Looking at our weekly RSI, as I pointed out yesterday, we're still getting uh, still getting squeezed tighter and tighter here. There's really hardly any more room for this thing to go. We should get a breakout of this RSI um, on the weekly um, at any time now, um, you know, more than likely uh, in the, at least within the next week or so. And if I come over here and I look at the daily, I still want to see a break above the fifth uh, above 50 um, on the RSI on the daily RSI, I should say. Uh, obviously, we have not broken above 50 in a very long time. We haven't broke decisively above 50 since uh, uh, the beginning of September. So let's wait. So let's see if we can get this a uh, break above the 50-day, uh, or excuse me, above the uh, above 50 RSI. That would be a, a a decisive break. You know, not like this or this, but a decisive break with consolidation above 50 on the daily RSI. Guys, would be an extremely bullish sign, in my opinion. So to wrap this up, guys, basically what we're watching is we're watching to see if we can get break if we can break above six three six zero above this resistance right here and consolidate above that zone. That'd be um, a, a very bullish sign of strength if that does happen. Of course, we're watching for this retest here, and also if we know that if sixty three hundred does break down, very likely we're going to come back down to this zone down here at about sixty two fifty um, at least. Possibly testing again 62.35. Of course, if 62.35 does break, guys, we could uh, decisively break. We could be coming much, much, much lower. If you're still holding your position down here, remember, guys, I told you anything below 62.35 um, was a decent place to start dollar cost averaging into a buy. Um, so when price broke down here, of course, that triggered my buy order here and here. A little bit further here so i am into a position i'm still holding on to my position i did not close my position even when we came up here but technically guys i told you guys um anything below 62.35 is a good buy and of course i would sell um targeting 63.60 and above this is where i'm looking to sell now personally i'm going to wait until i'm going to see if we can break above 63.60 i'm going to hold my position that triggered down here was so small because i doubt i'm dug in a dollar cost averaged in um, i had some buys here a little bit more here and a little bit more here. We only whipped down into the first layer of my buys, which is very, very small. So my position is very small. I'm just going to go ahead and hold on to that position for now. My stop loss has been raised, so I'm going to be in profit no matter what. Uh, my stop loss sits now at, uh, I had it down here. Um, I had my stop loss sitting all the way to actually down here at 61.15. Of course, I raised my stop loss now. My stop loss now sits at about 62.50. So either way, no matter what happens, I'm going to be in profit, guys. But I'm just letting you know. I always want to be uh, transparent with you. I'm not. I, I did not sell up here. I am still holding on to my position. Um, if you're a more conservative trader, um, what I would do is at the very least, if you bought down here, increase your stop loss. Um, but if you'd like to go ahead and sell, knowing that this thing could break down. By all means, go ahead and take your profit. There's nothing wrong with that. Even if this thing does explode and takes back off again, you didn't lose any money. You made money. Pat yourself on the back and know there's going to be a lot more money going, uh, a lot more money to be made going forward. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap it there, guys. If you have any comments, questions, suggestions, please let me know in the comment section below. As always, I do appreciate an upvote if you have enjoyed this content. Until next time, guys, please trade safe. Take care of yourselves. This is working. Signing out.